Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Neosystems Let's Reconnect Coffee Break series. We're excited to be back with you. I'm Don Carnavale. I work on the marketing team here at Neosystems. I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Elizabeth Jimenez. Elizabeth, great to see you. Good to see you, too. It's Thursday. It's finally spring. I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling positive. I'm excited and ready for this. It is Cinco de Mayo as well. So let's go ahead. And nothing says Cinco de Mayo like a coffee break series. So uh, let's go ahead and, and get started and have some fun. Let's do it. So let's briefly uh, get you up to speed on uh, get to know who Neo Systems is. Uh, we've been in business for over 18 years, uh, helping businesses uh, of all sizes, uh, mostly project based businesses, just be more successful. You know, we utilize uh, a, whole, a multitude of people, processes, and tool sets to help our clients grow, accelerate that growth and uh, support them as they as a, a get bigger and earn more business. And so whether you are a new client to Neo Systems or have been with us for a number of years, uh, it's great to have you here today. And we've got a lot of great information to share. So uh, let's go ahead and move forward. Elizabeth, do you wanna get us started and tell us a little bit about the, our acquisition most recently? Sure. So some of you may already know this and I know we've been kind of talking about this at each coffee break, so it may not be new news anymore. Um, but nonetheless, it's still very exciting to us. Uh, we were acquired by High Street Capital, a Chicago-based private equity firm back in September of last year. Um, and there's a lot that's changed, but a lot that hasn't. So our executive team is still in place. Um, we still have very high growth goals and we're doing well. We're really growing, which is super exciting. And there was one point like on the, on the last slide, Don, you don't have to go back to it, but I'll just touch upon it very briefly the people processes and tools. That's one of the reasons why I love working at Neo because we do a lot, an awful lot, and we utilize our best practices because we actually practice them on ourselves. Um, so that's exciting. And that is one of our core principles and, and values um, as a company. So that also carries through uh, despite the acquisition. Great point, Elizabeth. I think we'll touch on as we go through these slides, a number of those tool sets that we use internally at Neosystems that we've put to their paces and tried out you know, before uh, taking them out to our client base. So I think we'll, we'll touch on those very shortly. So now let's go ahead and get right into it. Talk about all the great services and solutions that Elizabeth mentioned. There are a lot of things that we do for uh, kind of across the board to serve our clients. So let's start right here with the Neo Secure Suite. Elizabeth, you want to take us through that? Neo Secure Suite. So I know I always say this. I say this every time. It's one of my favorite solutions and lines of business, but it really is because it offers so much to our clients. We give them so many different paths uh, to compliance, whether it be CMMC, whether it be NIST, um, and we offer different types of solution to fit what needs they have. So the Neo Secure Suite is built on the concept of three things. It's our Neo security platform. So it's, this is a, um, a pretty nice uh, tech stack, end-to-end -end solution for security, um, which includes program management, um, incident response, the whole nine yards. And we can get into this you know, in more detail, or you can reach out to both of us and we can talk you through it, but it's really exciting. And this together with NeoTech, which is our technology platform, which comes and stems from our managed IT uh, line of business, um, offers that kind of holistic um, yin and yang to security. So you have all the network and all of the configurations needed in addition to all of the vendor security, all in one, all in one together. Instead of having to go out and buy this and look for that and wondering what you're doing, you have it all in one, which is pretty nice but they do come apart from one another, which is also good. They just work really nice together. And then in addition to this, um, I know people are hearing a lot about enclaves out there, but we also have an enclave uh, and it's pretty exciting. I, I'm happy to tell you more. Um, this is kind of breaking news, but we have been talking about it for the last maybe month or two, um, but it's focusing on virtual desktop applications and it aligns the controls needed to whatever level you're trying to achieve um, to CMMC. So it is an alternative to a managed security approach. Both are really great. Um, you know, and I think that with this wave that's coming of CMMC uh, requirements from the DOD, among other things that will happen beyond CMMC, let's face it, that's just the baseline here. We're gonna see more to come. 
this is a great line of business that offers you really what you need without making you have to make the decisions yourself. Yeah, that, that's a great summary, Elizabeth. I just want to add a couple of quick points to that. One is that we've really seen a lot of interest um, with you know, smaller to mid-sized government contractors who don't have a big IT staff, don't have a great understanding of all these security requirements with regards to CMMC and, and NIST and DFARS. So what we're able to offer them is we we do understand these, these compliance standards. We're on top of them. We continue to read about them every day. We, we perform educational programs like our town halls that we do regularly. We've aligned our tech stack uh, just for this. So you don't have to go out, as you said, you don't have to go out and look for all those partners or all those technologies yourself. We've got them all built into our solution and we can offer all that to you, you know, at a, at a monthly rate that, that makes sense for your business. So it's been a tremendous amount of interest just because we're trying to make it easy for our clients, right? And this is, these are things that are not easy that are of a paramount importance to secure their networks and their data. Uh, and we're trying to make it easier for them to, to get there. So it's it's a great offering and I'm, I'm excited as well, Elizabeth. So your excitement, you know, uh, got me going as well. <laughs> All right, so let's move along to the Neo Planning Suite. So the Neo Planning Suite is really, it's powered by uh, Workday Adaptive Planning. Workday Adaptive Planning is a uh, cloud-based uh, budgeting, planning, and forecasting uh, solution. Uh, we, again, we use this tool set internally. Elizabeth and I work on our marketing budget uh, regularly when we have to make updates, we have to add, delete, things like that from our budget. We're asked to go in and use this tool set. Uh, it rolls right up to the, uh, the company's higher goals and higher budgets. So it's an amazing tool set. We've built some templates around that to help companies with organizational planning, with project-based planning, which is particularly of interest to our government contracting clients so they can do those project-based budgets and be make it more proactive instead of reactive and not just take that budget, throw it in a drawer and leave it there for 12 months. This is something that you can continue to look at, uh, use actual data to project where you're going to be, project you know if-then scenarios, uh, if, if you're going to make an acquisition or if you're going to add staff, you can uh, model out all these different scenarios. Uh, and it's a really great tool for, for organizations to utilize to really be, again, more proactive and collaborative with their, their planning and budgeting. Now, we've also built uh, a, a very tight integration between Workday Adaptive Planning and the gold standard among ERP for government contractors, which is, of course, dealt at cost point. So that's feeding data back and forth between the two systems. A number of our clients love that integration just because they don't want to have to enter that data in multiple times. They can get it set up so that you know, the data flows in, reports are updated regularly. So it's a great integration that we've already built out and a, a number of clients are already utilizing. And then another part of our planning suite is our, our business intelligence services. We have an entire team uh, that uh, does work on business intelligence, and that's an extra layer of reporting and analytics and visualization to show those key performance indicators and metrics that are important to organizations with regards to their planning and budgeting. So uh, these are some great tool sets, great, uh, again, consulting offerings that we have all around planning and budgeting forecasting that are great fits for, for government contractors. May I jump in and say one thing about of that second point? So Don, you mentioned that we use this internally and we did say this at the beginning you know, of this uh, program that we use everything internally. I'm particularly happy that we use this internally. I like to think that I'm a numbers person. Um, Don is much more of a numbers person than I am, but this makes it easy. It really makes it easy to manage and control and it's great. I love it. I mean, I think that, you know, if we didn't have it, it would be much harder, particularly for me. Um, and the other piece of this is that, you know, it shows us the reporting, these reports that you can pull and also from our team, they're really, you know, very detailed and very thorough. And they're showing Don and I how awesome we're doing at marketing. So that's the other favorite thing that I love about this. Yes, we love to hear that we're doing an awesome job. No doubt about that. Um, so great. Thanks, Elizabeth. That, those are some great points. Uh, next up, Elizabeth, I'm going to hand off to you to talk a little bit about the Neo Hosting Suite. Sure. So we have a hosting suite that we are working together on. We have one hosting suite that's just holistically Neo Systems, and we have a hosting suite that we're working together with Dell Tech on, which is very exciting. This hosting suite connects with the Dell Tech um, Crosspoint cloud, but it is able to host third-party applications that Dell Tech's cloud cannot, which is really nice because if you have a bunch of different applications that you're trying to host and you're trying to make them all seamlessly integrated, um, 
it's hard if you don't have everything in one place. This makes it possible and it's really exciting. There are multiple database options um, and we also align all of our goals for the creation and the, and the reference architecture of these builds um, to meet the CMMC compliance among others. So it's a, I mean, it's a fantastic solution and we're really building this out. So there's much more to come over the next couple of months and you can find our new solution in the Dell Tech Marketplace. Great point, Elizabeth. And a couple of quick points I want to make is here is that this is our own cloud. We've built this from the ground up. We don't, you know, utilize some other uh, hosting service for this. We built this with the security um, compliance standards in mind from the ground up. And we continue to, to make improvements to this cloud as we go. We we offer SLAs, which very few other hosting providers offer, certainly in the government contracting industry. Uh, and as you mentioned, the, the multiple database options I think are really important. Uh, you don't have to get stuck with one particular type of database. We can we can work with you with whatever way you want to do. So uh, this is great. I think we're going to hear a lot more about this hybrid cloud with Dell Tech very, very soon. It's very exciting. So if you've got, uh, if you're using CostPoint and you have third-party applications that you're using, this is something that uh, you should strongly consider because it's a great, uh, a great alternative to having things multiple places or on-premise and in the cloud. This is a way you can get everything in the cloud uh, and, you know, work with both us and Dell Tech to get it there. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about a quality management suite. So we partner with a company called Tip Technologies. The Tip Technologies provides um, manufacturing-based software uh, for government contracting industry. And they've got two main products that, they, that we're able to resell and provide consulting on, Tip QA, which provides quality assurance, and Tip SFE, which is the shop floor execution. Um, so all these products and, and these services are around quality assurance, quality control, quality management. So for manufacturers to make sure that, that you know, the products that you're putting out are meeting the standards that, that you need, again, they work directly with Delta Tech CostPoint. We're able to, to integrate those. We're able to host those ourselves in our cloud. So these are some great um, tool sets. People at Tip Technologies are great. We love working with them. Uh, and again, this is an area that uh, I think we can see a lot of growth because um, it's a great tool set. Great technology, great people to work with, and uh, a lot of manufacturers are already using it, but I think there's a lot of other ones who, who consider it as well. Yep, and as you mentioned, it's hosted in our cloud, so it, you know, connects with Dell Tech Cosplay. Great exactly. application. Neo Business Process Suite. So we're going to dive into this a little bit later, and this is just a very high-level overview, and I know you all can read the bullets too. Um, but this is a workflow management tool that makes life easier between teams. It, I mean, we have everything from different workflows that we've built out specific to finance, but it goes well beyond that, um, to, you know, other operational non-financial uh, related workflows. So we have, um, you know, as you see here, the business process the business process improvement solutions, which is powered by Integrify, very strong, beloved partner of Neo Systems, um, that and it automates key functions across your enterprise. So whether you're, you know, even working with an IT, contract, finance, we have the workflows built in to make it easier for your team. So and it also improves your audit readiness because you have a tr like a track of where things have gone. So you never have to look back and say, gosh, where did this fall off the radar? Or I don't know who signed off on it last or no one signed off on it last. Let's scramble to get it done. None of that happens with Integrify. Yeah, and th those are great points, Elizabeth. And I I'm going to save my thoughts for when we bring our special guest in, in a little while because we're going to dive a little bit deeper into our business process improvement suite because there's a lot of great things to tell about that. He's got some great uh, anecdotal stories, some great statistics and numbers to share that are really impressive with regards to uh, you know how our tool sets are, are helping our clients. So stay tuned for that. We'll get there in just a few minutes. So next up is the, the Neo Finance Suite. This is our suite where we work and, and provide uh, outsourced accounting services to our clients. And this can be anything from a part-time accounting clerk to a you know virtual uh, CFO or controller for a company. Uh, we would provide everything, including the, the tool set, the technologies, the processes, the people. We, for some clients, we literally take take over their accounting department to provide all the services that they need, meet all the co accounting compliance standards, do the reporting back to the funding agencies, and all the things you mentioned here. We augment their staff, 
you know, whether it's a small number of people or a larger group, we handle all their policies, make sure they're meeting all their compliance standards, and certainly, you know, incurred cost submissions are something near and dear to, to all the hearts of government contractors. We we uh, specialize in that. We provide a lot of assistance with those to our clients. So again, this is something that we've been doing since the very beginning. This is how we got our start 18 years ago. We continue to uh, work with a lot of different clients in this area. But you know, these are these are kind of the table stakes for, for government contractors, particularly small and growing government contractors who need to have these standards, need to have these uh, reporting done, and some of them just don't have the understanding. So we're able to to go in there and help them with that. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, did you want to add anything? I mean, I would just say, you know, there's that word compliance again, right? So we really focus upon on compliance in general, and this is kind of the financial piece of whatever business you have is core to its function. It's core to um, operational functionality and also the importance and success of your business. And so we're delighted to be able to offer this line of business and this kind of team to our clients and forever, you know, as long as they need it. If they need to move off of it when they're super big because they've grown out of it, that's fine. But we like to help them as long as they need. All right, now let's talk about the ERP services suite. So we obviously, we're a long time partner with Dell Tech. I'm, most people in the government contracting world know Dell Tech. They've been around for a long time. Uh, and what we do is we provide a lot of the services around CostPoint, everything from implementations and upgrades. We're able to integrate CostPoint with a lot of different types of third-party applications and systems, which once again, we're able to host those as well in our, in our cloud. Uh, we also have an entire team that's dedicated to things like data migration. I mentioned before, uh, we have a business intelligence team that works kind of across the board with reporting, analytics, dashboard, visualizations, and their KPIs and, and metrics. So they're able to support you know, our ERP services as well. And one of the newer areas that we, we are focused on, which is really exciting though, is change management. We're able to offer change management services if you've got a large project going around an implementation or an upgrade, uh, a lot of times these projects can go sideways in a hurry because uh, people just aren't on the same page. People are resistant to change when you're either moving into a new system or a new version uh, or a new way of doing things. We're able to come in and work collaboratively with your team to make sure everyone understands the goals, understands the success metrics, and uh, that everyone can land once that project is done. Uh, you know, it's proven the statistics show that when change management is brought in as part of the project, you know, a hot, very high percentage, I believe it's at least two thirds projects, but come in on time and on budget and are happy with the way the project went. So change management is something that I think is, is we're, we're very happy to be able to provide that to our clients now because we think it's, it's, it's key to a successful project. All right, the people in pay suite. So this is a, a, a combination of what have traditionally been our managed human capital services and our UKG Pro Consulting Services. UKG is obviously the new name from the, uh, the combination of Ultimate Software and Kronos. Uh, they're now called UKG. So we've got an entire team that provides uh, consulting services in and around uh, UKG Pro. Uh, but again, going back to talking about managed HR payroll, we'll provide the, your HR team, you know, whether it's one person, whether it's a few hours a week, whether you need an entire department, we'll provide all those services to you. We can manage your payroll if that's what you need. Um, again, it's augmenting your staff as needed. We understand all the regulations around HR with regards to government funding agencies, uh, the compliance and reporting uh, and analytics around that. We can provide all that to, to our clients. And then once again, that UKG Pro Consulting, um, we're providing those services across the, the board. And we're also building, a, we're very close to being finishing what we call the UKG Pro Connector. So this is an integration that goes directly from Delta Tech cost point to UKG. So you can be using actual data back and forth between your cost point ERP system and your uh, UKG human resources information system. So that's something that a lot of clients have been asking for. We're really excited to be able to um, almost have that ready to go. Uh, and, and so this is something that we've been offering for a while now. We've got a number of clients who utilize this. Um, and we're excited to, to kind of have these groups work together like this. Elizabeth, did you want to add anything? And no, you summarized that very well. All right, thank you. All right, the Neo Spend and Management Suite. So this is based on our partnership and it's powered by Concur. So Concur Travel and Expense. And once again, these are tool sets that we use internally. Uh, we use Concur Travel when we book our travel to go uh, on trips for, for conferences, to, for client visits, 
Um, we use expense to do all of our expense reports. There's an amazing mobile app that we use uh, that literally you can take a, a picture of a receipt. It pulls all the necessary and relevant data off of that receipt and starts to populate your expense report by itself. So it utilizes machine learning and, um, and uh, artificial intelligence to do all that. Again, we're, we're really pleased with having this partnership with SAP Concur because, again, we utilized it, we saw the value, and you know, we wanted to offer it to, to our clients as well. We've even built a connector that we call the Neo Expense Connector that works directly from uh, Concur Expense into Delta Cost Point. So once again, there's no need to, date, to key in data multiple times. You're using actual numbers from expense to go into Cost Point and vice versa. So it eliminates all the, the you know, next ex, ex, extra um, keying of data and possible uh, errors that come from that. Uh, so that we also offer, uh, you know, consulting and support services around that when clients need help, whether it's standing up a new system around concur travel expense, or just some assistance if, uh, if it, they um, are having some trouble with it, we can offer full services around that. So this is something that, you know, we've been partners with concur for a few years now, but we're really starting to see a lot of companies now that the pandemic, we're getting to a different stage of the pandemic, more people are beginning to travel more. And we're starting to see more and more interest in this because uh, people you know, need a good solution to be able to manage their, their travel as well as their expense. Elizabeth, any thoughts on that? I mean, no, you, you summarized it very well. Again, I would just say that I have a longer time explaining my expenses than putting them in SAP Concur. I mean, it's it's a fantastic tool and it really helps you know the folks like me that have a lot of explaining to do. All right, so that completes the first part of our presentation today. Now we're excited to be joined uh, by our Vice President of Business Process Improvement, Marty Herbert. Marty, great to see you. Hi, guys. Hey, how hey, are so you? Good. So we are going to dig a little bit deeper, as promised, into the uh, Neo Business Process Improvement Suite and all the great things that we're doing there. So let's go ahead and go back. This is the slide that we saw earlier, but we're going to dig a little bit deeper into some of these areas. So Elizabeth, you want to get us kicked off? Yeah, thanks, John. So I you know, mentioned Integrify as a partner of ours, and uh, they've been a partner of ours for quite some time. And they've helped us down to small and medium-sized businesses. Can you tell us a little bit more about you know, the workflow management tool itself? Yeah, so we you know, Integrify the tool um, really does just about everything that we need it to do uh, across business processes. So the whole team is really focused around business process management and improvement. And this tool has really helped us to take the leverage of the power of it to manage and automate everything from key financial and operational and really any type of process that you can think of. Uh, we've been successful in integrating with multiple systems um, across multiple environments and really powering everything from, you know, I, mean, I think you even mentioned it before, employee onboarding, uh, billing, payables, procurement. I mean, it, just about everything. It's so cool to see so many use cases um, that really helps both workflow task management, as well as even helping to automate the processes along the way. And so these um, processes, they can kind of go in between departments, right? So you can build just about anything you need. Yeah, it, it's interesting because a, a lot of the time somebody comes to us with a process problem and, and what it becomes is a lot of the time that process that's in between the systems or in between the departments and how do I make sure that, you know, going from, hey, I need something to, hey, I get something um, and how do I make sure everything in between happens, right? Because it, it's really easy to ask for a new piece of equipment, but all of the steps it takes to get there can really, uh, you know, can, can really take some time and, and take some management. And that's where Integrify helps to kind of pull everything together. We, we've even called it the glue that holds different departments and even different systems sometimes together. Yeah, and great. And, you know, we've mentioned a number of times today already about the, the, the tool sets and technologies that we use internally you know, that we're also able to offer our clients. And this is yet another one of them, right? We use Integrify internally at Neosystems for a lot of different processes. And it seems like Marty that we're building out new processes, you know, every month or every other month, right? Cause there's a new need for something and, and you and your team are able to, to help. 
Yeah, at, at this point, uh, my my team is I, I crunched the numbers the other day. We're we're at look, we're looking at over 250 different processes that we've either been involved with or helped to manage. Um, we're talking about 2,000 different unique requests on average per month uh, across the clients that we've implemented this from. Um, I think in grand total, uh, 600 over 600,000. Um, requests. So some form of a process has gone through um, across all the clients that we've implemented these from. And I mean, that range, ranges everything from non-financial to the operational processes and everything in between. So it, it, it spans the company in a lot of cases. Uh, I mean, even, in, even just internally, uh, we have 45 production processes that we run just internally for everything that we do across our companies. Can you tell us a little bit more? I mean, you were talking about 250 processes. This kind of all started like with NeoFlow from the finance perspective, but then it's kind of, you know, like it was the center of the universe and now we're all the way out into the universe. <laughs> tell us a little bit more about where it started and what you've developed it to. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. So, I mean, the, the, the entire practice really around Integrify and business process improvement revolved around the idea that we wanted to make sure that the right things were going to the right people at the right time for our financial processes. So the, the big ones that came right out of the gate for us were billing, AP, and financial statement approval, kind of the core three that we said, you know, these are core to so many different financial organizations within any company. So it makes sense to try to have the best version of that. We rolled it out across both internally and across our mass organization. Uh, and as our managed accounting services began to use it, as we began to use it, we started to also find clients that were having these same problems, um, the, the, the need and the ability to be able to track these things. So it grew from there to the more experience we got with building each of these processes, especially billing an AP, the more we realize that these processes, while unique across clients, there is a standardized baseline that exists across a core set of processes. And that's really where NeoFlow came from. So NeoFlow is, is our version of the baseline standard. It, it, it relates to cost point in most cases uh, specifically, but a lot of the time can be connected to any ERP. Uh, but it really does get the data that is needed to drive the process, drives it through the process, making it proactive instead of reactive. And then as it goes through, even having that tail end integration to I think we've mentioned it a couple times, reduce the amount of keying that we're doing across systems too. So when, when we built the NeoFlow workflow tools, we built them in Integrify because we knew it was the best platform to build it in. And we also built it in a way that from our experience, what we've seen on how best again, that standard that can then be morphed and growing from there to become the 400 task processes that we have built in the past. So there, there's so many things that, that we've seen and continue to see. You even mentioned it earlier about the number of use cases that we see. Because we continue to see some of the same ones, one of the NeoFlows that isn't quite out there yet, but it's, it's around procurement and PO management. That's another one that is, that is coming. Um, we've built it out now numerous times, and it's one that we've been asked about so many times that we've now started to see where that commonality is. So it's bringing in all of that knowledge and experience to make that standardized process. That's great, Marty. And I know, you know we've mentioned at different points in this presentation this morning, the importance of, of compliance, the importance of being able to have an audit trail, right, and with different technologies. And, and I know that for Integrify, that's a, a huge point, a huge benefit of having and utilizing the tool set because with there being less and less paper used for approvals these days, especially with you know, people working from home for the last two years, you need that audit trail. You need to have it documented because, you know, funding agencies need to see that. So can you talk a little bit about how, you know, Integrify and, and the NeoFlow processes, you know, really help to, to you know, improve that audit readiness? Yeah, well, and I'll start by, you know, kind of, you know, admitting that I am a recovering auditor. Um, so, you know, so uh, some, some people know that some people don't, but I did start my career in auditing. So, I, but I, but I've seen, you know, kind of the need for what that documentation should look like. And, and the cool part is 
with Integrify, as you do a process, you get a record of everything that happens in the process. The who, what, where, when, why, how, everything that's captured for every task. So you think about the normal way we used to do things, right? You had one of two methods. You emailed somebody. Okay, maybe three. You emailed somebody. Some people might have, may have even picked up the phone. It did happen. And, or you walk down the hallway. So first of all, we don't walk down the hallway as much anymore, unless it's going to get lunch in our kitchen, because a lot of us are working remotely. So walking down the hall doesn't happen as much. Number two, the email, when I say, hey, I need blank, the, the example I love to use is I need a laptop. It, does, it falls flat, right? Because I don't know what size, I don't know what the keypad needs. Do I need a nine keypad? Does it need to be a 17 inch or a 15 inch? What are all these different things? So incomplete requests that were happening through email, let alone the fact that a week later you had to follow, remember to follow up. So Integrify is following up for you. It's capturing all of the data on every step of the process so that the email chain doesn't get lost so that the end of the hallway to the next cube over or whatever doesn't have to happen. It can happen regardless of where you are geographically. And you don't necessarily have to pick up the phone. Yes, the phone still exists, but, but you have the ability to capture every piece of the process. It's then reportable, auditable, and it gives you a nice narrative view of everything that happened in your process because it captures all that data. So going back to, you know, the Neo flow flows that you've created, can you just kind of list them out beginning from like priority to like everything afterwards? Yeah. So it, it's interesting because the, you know, first one, first one that uh, everybody talks about is AP because that's the one we get the most questions about, right? So AP was the big one. It was, hey, we need to know how we do what we do um, in everything that relates to accounts payable. The next one, as I mentioned before, was the was the billing process. Billing process being the one where we've got to make sure we get those things out the door. We have to make sure that we bill our clients in a timely manner because in the end, we have to get paid in order to keep doing business um, or else all of your work in marketing is for naught, right? So um, then, then there's vendor maintenance. Um, this was one that you know really kind of came out of a lot of the work we were doing with procurement, uh, but vendor maintenance really centered around the idea that what we were finding in a lot of systems was duplication of vendors or not exact duplication, but slight variances, right? So some people were some people were inputting it into the system that said Federal Express, some put in FedEx, some people put in Fed Space X, and all of these things ended up being different vendors that were actually the same thing. So having a way to both both capture, change, and maintain new and returning vendors on an ongoing basis was something that we heard a lot. And you know, we had found that there was a commonality across, across different clients. Uh, vendor ratings then came uh, sp significantly um, to, to light because as we are looking at vendors and maintaining them, we actually had a couple of clients who were like, yeah, but I don't know whether this vendor is any good. Right. So somebody from across the company may have may have used them before and just gotten horrible service from them. We don't know that because we're so disconnected sometimes. So what we did is actually so for our cost point clients in particular, there's actually an extensibility. There's an extension into cost point that will actually capture the vendor rating associated with that vendor and then let, allow you to maintain it with every transaction. You can come in, kick off the process and then continue to keep that rating up to date. Uh, we found that you know one of the uh, one of the lesser used modules within cost points so kind of helping to drive that a little bit uh, was employee management uh, making sure that we could see and and update the information about employees within that ERP made it really uh, made it really easy to both then integrate it into onboarding processes offboarding processes things like that um, so employee management is another one Journal entry approval, uh, big one for us too. Um, there, there is no 
there's no other process that I know of that needs the type of control that journal entries do. Uh, and we and we we had heard it so much over and over and over, and we had built it out a couple times, uh, both internally and externally. And and really, what we came to was, you know, we needed a way to handle a multitude of types of journal entries in a way that then allowed us to get the approval before that was posted. Because what we were finding was there were a lot of journal entries in the system that just in the ERP that weren't getting approved, that weren't getting finalized, that weren't being pushed, but they were sitting out there languishing in the database. So this actually allows you to prepare the journal entry before it gets pushed so that you don't bog down the system inside of your ERP with all that superfluous data. Uh, the, the last three here, uh, financial approvals, uh, it's financial statements. We do it every month. We have monthly, monthly financial statements, uh, and, and we do this a lot uh, in, uh, internally and externally, uh, especially in our, in our managed accounting uh, organization. That, you know, they, they're doing financial statements, and it's a standard list of financial statements that comes out of CostPoint, um, and, and there's a space for each of those, making sure that we're capturing that information on a regular basis and getting that review and approval. Uh, employee workforce has been a huge one. Again, this is one of those ones that was kind of secondary to a bigger process, um, project setup. Um, so we've done multiple different versions of project setup. Um, we've been able to kind of figure out that level ones and level two projects are standard. So we're kind of looking at Neo flows related to project setup. But what we did realize was that employee workforce setup was for projects that exist was something that we could standardize and make a lot simpler for your program managers, your project managers, and kind of across the board to manage who's, who's working on what and when. And last but not least is travel authorization. Uh, you know, we, we have, we've had companies that, you know, they're, they're not quite big enough to need these big robust tools to do these types of things, but they need something that on a project by project basis, or even on an indirect basis, where they can, where they can get an authorization and a document based on that authorization to go travel that they can then take with them and say, yeah, I'm authorized to take this travel travel similar to what you see in government agencies uh, where you have to be authorized in order to do it. We had some needs and we, and we built out that travel authorization process so that it can pull in that project data and really start to uh, start to leverage the power of both the existing source data and um, and some other uh, user inputs to make sure that, again, the right things get to the right people. So this is a really hard question, Marty, uh, but I have to ask. Okay. Which is your favorite process from all the ones you've developed and why? Um, so I would say out of all of them, I, I, I would love to say payables, but it's not. Um, I, I think for me, um, it, it's, it's the one that's actually forthcoming. It's our procurement processes. Um, what we have found is that PO management, um, because, because this one truly leverages the core power of Integrify to be expandable both on the front end and on the back end. So, so what we've done is we've really built out a, a couple times now, a few times now, um, where we can tie into an ERP system for that core project data, account data, that kind of thing, people, those types of things, pull in that data. And then through the use of a custom database that we have pre-configured that we basically just hit the button and install on the back end of, of Integrify, we're actually using that to maintain and manage purchase orders. Um, so these purchase orders now exist. They're able to be incremented and decremented as necessary, changed throughout the process. So you don't necessarily have to rely upon ERP systems that have that functionality. You don't have to necessarily rely on, especially if you're in something like a QuickBooks or something like that, that doesn't have a really robust process or um, um, or, or management of purchase orders, you now have the ability to have really a purchase order module that is a process um, and allows you to continue to manage those. That, that's one of the ones that I'm most excited about, uh, especially right now, because we've built it out a couple times um, and, and we've now proven it a couple times. So having that, having that back end really built out and baked in uh, really, really kind of goes a long way to everything that we can do uh, within, within Integrify and, and within our team. 
Marty, we've got just a, a few minutes left in our, our time today, but there are a couple of things I wanted to, uh, to cover with you. Uh, one yeah. was in our uh, prep call for this session, one of the things that, that you mentioned was that uh, we, you've been starting to see a lot more um, non-financial processes be you know required, right? Operational processes, things that traditionally maybe weren't, weren't a need. So can you talk a little bit about kind of what you've been seeing and what are some of the different you know, non-financial processes that people are asking for? Yeah, it, it, it's been really interesting. Um, you know, again, for the last two years, you know, we've seen, you know, we've seen some big shifts talking about walking down the hallway and, and that kind of thing. So the, the cool part is, you know, Integrify has QR codes and things like that that are built into being able to kick off processes. Uh, and, but, but in addition to that, what we're starting to hear from clients now is that, you know, yeah, what we built, these financial processes are really great, but now we're starting to hear about those ones that are non-financial, right? A lot of a lot of HR onboarding and offboarding. You know, there, there's not truly a financial there, but there's people management. So employee onboarding and offboarding, there is the HRIS piece, right? That's that's for our UKG folks. They they do all of that, you know, all of all of the pieces that are required from an HR perspective to get that done. But there are so many different threads of an onboarding process that need to happen to make sure that the first day that somebody comes on board, that they're ready, especially if we're remote, right? Make sure we send their, send their technology to them, make sure they're ready for, to, to hit the ground running on day one. Um, we, we've heard about a lot of, we'll call it shop floor types of activities, right? So inventory management um, and, and, and even, even work order management and what am I doing? And, you know, the, the idea of being able to, you know, when you go to, a shelf to pull something off of the shelf. There's a you can put a QR. You print, print the QR, put it on the shelf, and they go over with their phone, scan it, and kick off a process that says, "Hey, I'm taking three of these." You know, and it can be specific even to a part at that point if necessary. Um, we're hearing things like that. We're hearing things, um, especially in, in IT. Uh, you know, I know I know this one's near and dear to Elizabeth's heart too. You know, in, in that in that secure area in the IT CMMC and all of the you know all of the different acronyms that go along with it, we're starting to hear a lot about how do I better manage my processes because I know that they impact a lot of different areas. But until you take the time, and that's kind of part of what my team does, to map it out, discuss it, improve it, and then workflow it, until you take the time to do that, you don't necessarily know where it's touching, but we're starting to hear some of that. How do I make sure that the right person is set up for this, for, for the secure enclave area? How do I make sure that the right environment is being set up? We, we recently uh, integrated uh, with, a, with another tool set through API that will help to automatically create, this is just internal for now, but will automatically help us create the environments that our hosting, that our hosting division is putting together. So a new client comes on board, basically they enter a four digit number and some, and some key fields, they push the button in Integrify and this other system picks it up and creates part of that environment. It, 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 it's those kind of cool non-financial operational things as part of the reason I like government contracting because you could always end up with something different tomorrow. I know we have like a minute or two left here. Um, are there any questions or Don, did you have any other additional questions you wanted to touch on? No, one thing that you know, we can move forward and if anyone has any questions for Marty, you can certainly enter those in the Q&A area. But Marty, while we're waiting, I wanted to see if you could share some, some of those stats, some of those metrics that you, you always tell us about as far as how many processes we're seeing, how, so what some clients are doing, just to the extent of the, the power of the tool set. Yeah, so so it, it's funny. Right now, um, our our biggest client um, actually goes back about seven years. It, it's Deloitte. Um, we we talk about them quite a bit. Um, but they're averaging requests per month somewhere around twelve, almost twelve thousand requests per month. Uh, they have AP billing. Uh, they've got seventy two different active processes. Now, to be fair, uh, complete transparency, we didn't build all of those, but. But we did help them with probably about 12 to 15 of those, and we helped to create their internal organization that actually does build those uh, for themselves now. Um, but so they're, they're doing about 12,000 per month. Uh, they've got 36,000 users in the system. Uh, like I said, 72 active processes. Uh, they are 
370 plus thousand requests over the course of the last, I think, seven, six years. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's been amazing to watch them grow. Um, and that's not it. We've got a client who's just gone live. Uh, they're getting ready to process just in accounts payable alone, somewhere between 12 and 20,000 accounts payable processes a month. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, which, which my understanding from Integrify is that's actually the biggest use case they have company-wide. So uh, it, it's pretty exciting to kind of see that one start to take off. So it, it's pretty cool. Looks like we have one question here that's uh, come in or among a couple others, but I wanted to touch on this one. What kind of benefits are your process improvement customers seeing from all this uh, automation? Uh, Pretty significant. Um, uh, one of the biggest ones um, was was really early on. Um, we actually had our billing a billing manager come to us after you know again billing process being one of the big ones. Um, billing manager come to us and it used to take her ten days for, for fixed price billing. It used to take her ten to twelve days every month of getting out the word, following up, and really tracking and tracing everything that she needed to do for billing processes for fixed price. I mean, this should be a set it and forget it kind of thing, right? So that's what we helped her to do. Um, now we've limited it to about 10 minutes. Um, basically she goes out, she grabs a report, she puts it into a tech file, she hits the button and off it goes to the races. Uh, it then assigns everything. It gives her a report that she can then just come in and on a daily basis, just check to see where things are. So it, it's reduced that 10 days of follow-ups and constant emails and IMs and phone calls, whatever. Um, to, you know, 10 minutes and then checking her screen every now and then to see what's happened. So uh, that's one of the biggest ones. Uh, internally, uh, we went from, uh, you know, our, our processes, uh, we saw a difference in approvals. Uh, it was taking us somewhere between 12 and 14 days to approve our, to approve bills going out the door so that we could get paid. Uh, we're down, we're down to a day or two. Um, so, you know, real, real time, real time numbers, uh, not to mention a lot of the savings that people are seeing in a lot of what we're seeing is changing from older systems or even other systems that aren't being supported as much. Uh, those kind of changes, they're seeing big, big returns on just switching to something that they can do that relatively easy to build for them, uh, and, and kind of makes them the masters of their own future. It's incredible. And it sounds like you're, you know, you're really saving money too for the clients. Yeah. Yeah. Especially I, I mentioned the PO process. Um, I mean, when you, when you think about implementing a purchasing module in an ERP somewhere uh, versus a versus building a workflow um, that that savings can be in the tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, difference. Great. Well, it looks like we, we need to wrap up, but there's one other question that just popped in. So maybe we can answer that before we go. Sure. Um, do you see clients eventually taking on that process development methodology in Integrify, teaching them to fish? Always, always. Um, I mean, it, it, it's part of what my team does. Um, so we do, you know, we, we do business process documentation. We do business process improvement because of our Lean Six Sigma certification. Um, and, and when, but when we're engaged on an Integrify specific uh, work, what we're doing is we're building out those processes. We're bringing the Neo flows to them. We're showing them how we do it so that they can then take it and run with it because the name of the game for anything with business process improvement is continuous improvement. And while I would love to serve every client all the time forever, my, my level of energy can sometimes be a little overwhelming after a while. <laughs> so, so we, we, Never. Like to, <laughs> so we like, we like to try to teach them to fish. We like to try to teach them how do we build it so that it becomes a, Hey, Marty, Hey team, can you help us with this one thing that we're struggling with rather than can you build this entire workflow for us? It becomes a just kind of a mutual back and forth um, in the long run. And we've got a lot of clients that are in that situation now where, you know, we hear, we hear from them maybe once a quarter, uh, Hey, can you help us with this one thing? So that, and those are the ones we like to see the most because, you know, we, we know that they're out using it. You know, we're still getting the statistics back and things like that. So we know they're using it. We know that they're building more processes and really doing it for themselves. 
All right. Thanks very much, Marty. This has been great. Um, yeah, thank you. One more item. Elizabeth, you want to touch very quickly on, on the open house before we conclude? Sure. Yeah. So in about two weeks, I think it's two weeks from today. Could that be around that time? Yeah, that's um, Neo Systems is returning to our open house. So this is our in-person event, an annual open house. We've held this for three years prior to the pandemic, and we're excited to reconnect with all of our clients and friends with of Neo. And so it's a great opportunity, just like an open house of the house, you can come in, take a look, you know, peel back the curtain, meet our teams, ask questions, see what new things we're developing, what updates to our lines of business and solutions. Um, it's a great, you know, reception where you can network as well. So it's going to be catered, it's going to be fun. We're going to have um, some folks from the government, folks from industry, um, a lot of influencers out there will be attending. So really exciting. You can register for this event on our website. And I know, Marty, you're going to be there you know, I showing will. your solution and be able Absolutely. to answer questions. So we, um, we invite you all on this, call, on this webinar here to uh, reach out to us. And if you need help with registration, we, we'd love to meet you. Come join us. All right, thanks, Elizabeth. So um, just to conclude today's session, I want to remind you that uh, our next coffee break is happening three weeks from today. That'll be on May 26th at 11 o'clock Eastern. If you have any questions, our contact information is right there, our website, as well as all of our email addresses there towards the bottom of the screen. So please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. If you have a question, we're happy to, to help you with that, or if you have interest in the open house, as Elizabeth mentioned. So again, thank you very much for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you at the next coffee break. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.